All right, so uh, we're going to start our new unit, uh, which is all about power laws. Half of it's going to be review, half of it not today. And then we're going to continue on with uh, sort of getting into quadratic relations, which is going to uh, dominate somewhat the rest of the year. So no more linear equations and no more triangles for those of you who don't like them. Uh, but again, we're getting into the power laws today. We're going to do six of them, four, four to this class, and then uh, at 10 o'clock we'll do two more, the hard ones. All right, so again, uh, today, this first class should be review from grade nine, but again, COVID, I don't know what you did. Uh, so again, a power is something that looks like this, where I have, and this is how you say it, two to the power of three. Now, a lot of students say, oh, well, you have a big number and you have a little number. Well, they actually do have names. Uh, the big number here is called the base. The little number here is your exponent. All right, now, two to the power of three. Again, that's how you say it. What it means is if I take the big number and I multiply it by itself, the number of times the exponent is saying. So in this case, I would take the number two and multiply it by itself three times. So in this case, two to the power of three is equal to two times two times two, which is eight. Now, what we're gonna look at, like I said, is we're gonna do six power laws today. We're gonna do four here early this morning. Now, the first one is when we're talking about multiplying powers. All right, so when you're multiplying powers, now here's the key is they must have the same base, the same big number, if you will. All right, so an example of uh, our rule is that we could have x to the power of a times x to the power of b. Now again, when we are using these rules, most of our rules today, they have to have the same base. And so in this case, it does have the same base. It's x and an x. I don't know what the number is, but they do have the same base because it's x and an x. And so what we do is we keep the base the same, but when we're multiplying powers with the same base, we add the exponents. So if I have an exponent A and an exponent B, then our new exponent will be A plus B. All right, so a couple of examples of that. Uh, a, we have something like 4 to the power of 7 uh, times 4 to the power of 11. So again, the, base, the bases are the same. Uh, we have 4 to 4. And again, if I want to simplify this or express it as a single power, I keep the base the same. I add the exponent, so I have a 7 plus an 11. So I would end up with a 4 to the power of 18. All right, uh, another example, kind of throw a diff bunch of different scenarios out here, is we have uh, negative 3 to the power of 5 times negative 3 to the power of 8. All right, so again, these powers here have the same base, has to happen, okay? And again, I'm going to keep the base the same. So even though it's a negative three, the base, and we're multiplying these powers, the base stays the same, all right? So it does stay positive, or sorry, negative, negative three. Again, I'm going to add my exponents, so five plus eight is 13. All right, uh, a few more here, different, like I said, different scenarios. I could have something like x to the power of seven times x to the power of 20. Now again, in this case, I don't know what the base is, but I do know that they're gonna have the same base of x. So it doesn't matter whether I know it or not, as long as they're the same, which they are, it's an x. I keep the base the same, add my exponents, so I have x to the power of 27. Uh, D. Let's see here we have, uh, oh, okay, a little combination here. So I have uh, x to the power of 3 times y to the power of 4 times x uh, to the power of 4 and y to the power of 10. All right, so I want to figure those two, those two things out. Now, we have two different types of bases, but because we are multiplying, you can multiply in any order. And so I'm gonna put my x base 
powers together and I'm going to put my y base powers together. All right, so when I look at the x's, if I multiply those two x's, an x to the 3 and an x to the 4, I would have x to the power of 7. Again, keeping the base the same. So I'm combining the, the parts that have a base x together. Now I'm going to combine the bases with y's together. All right, so I have a y to the 4th and a y to the 10. Again, if I multiply those two, I keep the base the same, add the exponent, so I get y to the power of 14. All right, uh, last one. For this anyways, we'll step it up even more. Uh, I'm going to have 6x uh, y cubed times... Let's see here, uh, 2x squared y to the fourth. 2x squared y to the fourth. And I'm running out of room here. All right, so now this part, this particular term times a term, we are multiplying, they each have three parts. They have a number in front of them, they have a base of x exponent or power, and they have a base of y power. But again, what I'm going to do is multiply them in the order. So I'm going to multiply my numbers together. I'm going to multiply my powers with base x together. And I'm going to multiply my powers with base y together. All right. And so if I did my numbers, 6 times 2, because they're numbers, I am just going to straight out multiply them. So 6 times 2 is a 12. All right. Now, I have an x times an x squared. Now, if you have an x, there's a secret one. I always call it the secret one's a grade nine there. There is an exponent there. It is a one. We just don't usually say that. It's like if somebody asks you how much money you have in your wallet. Uh, I have five dollars. That's what you say. You don't say, I have five to the power of one dollars, right? So you don't include that exponent, but it is there. And so if I have an x to the power of one times x to the power of two, again, I keep my base the same. Add the exponent, so I'm going to have an x cubed there, x to the power of 3. And then, of course, I do my y's, where I have a y cubed times a y to the fourth. Again, keep the base the same, so that's a y there. Run in a room. 3 plus 4 gives me the 7. So our final answer, again, we're having three parts. We have a number, a power with a base x, and a power with a base y. So we have 12x cubed y to the power of 7. All right, so that's multiplying powers. And of course, if we're doing multiplying powers, you know the next one's got to be dividing powers. All right, so let me get that off of here. All right, so uh, let's see here. Like I said, Next rule, because we're doing four, four in this class. All right, whoops, try that off. All right, so rule number two, like I said, is dividing powers. All right, so something that we could have is uh, x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b. And once again, as I was saying, just like the last rule, you have to have the same base. Otherwise, you can't do any of this stuff, all right? can't use these rules. Now, when we multiply powers just now, we added the exponents. So naturally, when we're dividing powers, we're going to subtract the exponents. But of course, as I said, keep that base the same. Now, when you're subtracting the exponents, you take the numerator exponent minus the denominator exponent. All right, so we're going to have an A minus B there. All right, so again, I'll work with some examples. Uh, so we get something like uh, 8 to the power of 12 divided by 8 to the power of 5. There we go. All right, so again, bases are the same. We got 8s here. All right, so I'm going to keep that base the same. Subtract my exponents, so a 12 minus a 5. So we have a to the power of 7. All right, uh, again, I'm going to throw different scenarios at you here. B, uh, we could have negative 4 to the power of 13 divided by, of course, negative 4 uh, to the power of 3. All right, so this time we have a negative base 
but it doesn't matter. We have two negative bases because they're the same, which we need to have. So again, I keep my bases the same. So nothing happens to that negative sign. And uh, then I subtract my exponent. So I have a 13 uh, minus a 3. So I'm going to end up with a negative 4 to the power of 10. All right. Uh, let's see here. C. What do we got? Uh, X to the power of 20 divided by X to the power of 9. All right. Again, I don't know what the base is other than the fact that it's X. I don't numerically know what it is. But again, they both have an X for a base, which I need to happen. Again, I'm going to keep my base the same and subtract my exponents. So 20 minus 9 is 11. All right, uh, one more. Let's see here. Uh, we have something like uh, X to the power of 8 times Y to the power of 7 divided by, uh, let's see here, X to the power of 5 and a Y. All right, so again, we have a term on the top that has two different bases, but we also have a term on the bottom that has two different bases. But again, if they have the same base, I can do uh, uh, divide those powers. And so I'm going to divide the base X parts, X or powers, I'm gonna divide the Y base powers. All right, so the X part here, again, keep the base the same, so I have the X. 8 minus 5, that's a 3. Now the Y parts. Again, keep the base the same. Subtract my exponents. And again, uh, so I have a 7 here. You don't see anything here. It's not a 0. It's a 1. All right, so 7 minus 1. We have X cubed Y to the power of 6 is our final answer there. All right, so that's dividing powers. Uh, number three, number three, I said do four here. All right. So example number three, or uh, rule number three, is when you have a power of a power. All right, so we have, say, something like this, x to the power of a, but then we take that whole thing and do it to the power of b. All right, so there's a, something a little bit different. Now, we don't have one base here, but it is, that's the base we are going to end up with for our answer. So we have a base of x, we're going to have a base of x for our answer. And what happens with this one is that uh, we multiply our exponents. So if I have an A and a B, I'm going to have A times B on my answer for my, my final power. All right, so uh, a couple of examples. Uh, for instance, we get something like uh, 5 to the power of 3 to the power of 4. All right, so when we have 5 to the power of 3 to the power of 4, again, my base is 5. There we go. And then I multiply my exponent. So I have a 3 and a 4, and, uh, well, 3 times 4 gives us a 12. So we have 5 to the power of 12. All right, uh, B, what else? Probably throw a negative base in there. Yeah, this can look messy. So I have a negative 6 to the power of 2, and then I'm going to take that power of five. There we go. So it looks confusing because there's brackets everywhere. But again, all you have to do is be able to identify which are the, which, what is the base and which ones are the exponents. So in this case, again, our base is negative six. All right. And then again, our exponents are two and five. So I multiply those. And so our final answer is negative six uh, to the power of 10. All right. Uh, something like this. C we could have y to the power of, uh, let's see here, negative 4. And then take it to the power of 6. Now, this is something we're going to deal with in the uh, next class. Uh, negative exponents, but just for this, again, I have a base. It's not a number this time, but we do have it. 
So I keep the base the same, and again, multiply my exponents, so I get a y to the power of negative 24. Again, we're going to learn how to do, deal with negative exponents later on today, which you did not do in grade 9, no matter uh, what class you're in, probably. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, that's it for that. All right, so now we go to rule number four, the last one for today, or for this class anyways. Plus power of power. Now, this next rule is you probably used the most in math when you're dealing with powers or polynomials, because polynomials and powers are basically the same thing. All right, so this is number four. This is the expanded Exam expanded power rule. All right, so here's the expanded power rule. It's two different ways, but essentially the concept is the same. Is that if you have two things or more, it doesn't even really matter, but I'm going to say two things to the power of A. So there's my two things. I have a term, uh, an X and a Y. And what the expanded power rule says is that if whatever is in the brackets, if there's one thing or two things, three things, four things, the exponent is applied to everything in the brackets. And so I would have to take x to the power of a, and I also have to take y to the power of a. Or you could look at it, now those are two multiplying things. Same idea if we have division. So say we have a fraction inside our for our base, but again, Two things are inside the brackets, so the exponent is going to be applied to both things. So I would have x to the power of a and y to the power of a. All right, so the exponent gets applied to everything in the brackets, whether it's in the numerator, denominator, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's try some examples here first. Uh, let's see here. A, uh, we have one-fifth squared. All right, so there's an example of division. All right, but uh, again, I have a one and a five in the brackets, right? One's in the numerator, five's in the denominator. I'm going to apply the exponent to both the one and the five. And then I can further uh, simplify this. One squared, one times one is one. Five squared is 25. So the answer is 1 25th. Uh, B. Uh, we have something like uh, negative two-thirds to the power of four. All right, so again, uh, we have an exponent there of four. There's two numbers. It's a fraction, but there is two numbers that make up this fraction inside the bracket. So I'm going to apply the exponent to both the negative two in the numerator and the three in the denominator. All right, so uh, negative 2 to the power of 4. So that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which would give me, let's see, negative 2 times negative 2. That's a 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. But times a negative 2 is a positive 16. And then 3 to the power of 4, uh, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's an 81 there. All right, uh, let's see here. C. Uh, we got something like uh, x divided by y to the power of 5. Well, that's just like our definition here. So what I'm going to do is uh, apply the exponent of 5 to both the x and to the y. Well, because I don't know what x isn't a number and y isn't a number yet, uh, that's as far as I can go. All right, so I just applied again the exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. All right, let's uh, get into some multiplying ones. So like our first example there. Uh, so for example, something like this, uh, we have two uh, x to the fifth y uh, cubed. All right, so now I got three things inside the brackets. I have a number and uh, two different powers. All right, but I'm going to apply that exponent of 3 to the 2. I'm going to apply it to the x to the power of 5. 
and I'm going to apply it to the Y. All right, so that three, again, exponent three is being applied to every single term. Now I can simplify this. Two to the power of three is two times two times two, which is an eight. And then I have x to the power of five to the power of three. That is a power of a power. So what happens with these rules is we're going to be able to use more than one rule for some of these. And so when I do have a power of a power, again, the base stays the same. Multiply my exponent so I get x to the power of 15. And well, y cubed is y cubed. All right, so we have x times x, or 8 times x to the power of 15 times y cubed. Uh, let's try another one of those guys. Uh, we get 3x uh, y to the seventh squared. Oops, y to the seventh. And we squared. All right, now I'm going to do this all in one step, this one. But again, that 2, exponent of 2, is getting applied to every single term in there. So 3 squared, right? So this 2 is applied to the 3. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. Uh, x squared, well, x squared is x squared. All right, and then the last one, again, I'm going to take y to the 7th and square it. That's a power of a power, so again, I keep my base the same. I multiply my exponent, so I get y to the power of 14. All right, now, like I said, we can have questions where we have to uh, use all, a bunch of different rules. Not all of them, but more than one. So I'm going to try uh, do a few of those. We call them combos. So it's applying more than one rule to a question, which we kind of just did right here. We used power of a power. And that will happen again today at 10 o'clock where we use uh, negative exponents. All right, so these questions, uh, again, I'm going to call them, uh, oh, that's wet. So these are combos, I guess. All right, so we have something like, uh, and again, the question always says, right is a single power. So simplify it. Uh, so I get something like this, 5 to the power of 10 times uh, 5 squared to the power of 3. Oh, and then we'll uh, throw a division in there, 5 to the power of 4. There we go. So again, the key here is I can use a lot of these rules because the bases are the same. Now, I want to simplify this, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but uh, you're a little bit restricted. I could divide these two here, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this part here, this power of a power. And so I got 5 to the power of 10 times, and again, uh, power of a power here, keep the base the same. Uh, multiply my exponents, so I'm going to have 5 to the power of 6 there. And again, divide by 5 to the power of 4. So I did a power of a power here. On the top, I'm multiplying my powers, so that's rule number one, keeping the base the same. I add my exponent, so I get 5 to the power of 16. And then finally, now I'm dividing powers, rule number 2. So we're going to use 1, 2, 3 here. Uh, keep the base the same, and again, subtract my exponent, so 16 minus 4 is a 12. So we just use three rules there, all in one question. All right, uh, let's try it again here. Try something else. Uh, we got uh, 4 to the power of 8 uh, to the power of 4 times uh, 4 to the power of 7 divided by, this one's very similar, 4 times 4 to the power of 3. Again, a lot of parts here, but again, I'm just going to simplify where I can. Uh, all right, so again, uh, rule number 3 here, the power of power. I can figure that part out where I keep the base the same. Uh, multiply my exponent, so 8 times 4 is uh, 32. And again, times 4 to the power of 7. All right, so there's my numerator. I just figured out this part. Uh, denominator, I can do some figuring out there because I have a power times a power. Same base, of course, needs to happen. Uh, I have a 4 here again, that exponent, secret 1 there. And so if I put these two together, I have 4 to the power of 4. All right, uh, and again, just like I did up here, I can do it a little bit differently. It doesn't matter. I can either put these two together or take this into account. 
Uh, so I could actually divide these two here if I wanted. That's one way to do it, but I, I'll stick with what I did up top, where uh, I've got my power times the power here. So I'm going to, again, keep my base the same. Uh, add my exponents of 32 and a 7. Ooh, that's uh, 39. And of course, down the bottom, I still have that 4 to the power of 4. And then once again, dividing powers, same base. Keep the base the same. Subtract my exponents. So 39 minus 4 is a 35. So I end up with a 4 to the power of 35. So there's an example there where we use all the uh, three of the rules in combination just to simplify it and get down to, again, a single power. All right.